All right. All right. We are live. So what are you working on? Hey, everybody. It's Andy Old Tech Guy. And my buddy, Anthony. Anthony, what's happening, bro? What's going on? We're over here. Two, uh, well, one mechanic uh, on TTS and one DIYer right here for you. We're talking about cars. We're talking about tools. We're talking about all kinds of stuff just because we think it's fun. It's hope you could join us. Hope uh, hope anybody that's out there can jump in on the stream and say hello and do all that stuff. Now, with that said, you may see me go in and out of frame here. Sorry, this is me. I'm over here. I may go in and out of frame as uh, as I work on this car. Now, what am I working on? Well, this is a 2009 Toyota Camry with a 2.4 liter engine. Uh, four. This is the American version automatic. So that means it's got four motor mounts. And what I'm working on is I'm working right by the power steering pump. And right next to the power steering pump, hiding right behind it, is a little screen. I think they call it a VTT screen or something like that. It it screens the oil or, or, or it uh, filters the oil before it goes into the variable time uh, solenoid. I think that's what it's called. So I replaced that today. I, I, I replaced that. That was pretty cool. I replaced the solenoid. I replaced the PVC valve or PCV valve, PVC valve. What? How do you say that? PV, PV. Am I saying that? PVC. Isn't that isn't PVC the stuff you use for plumbing? <laughs> I always get confused. Anyways, anyways, I'm sorry. That's my uh part is sometimes though. Yeah, I get confused quite easy. I use a lot of acronyms in my job and uh you know it's not it, I use a lot of acronyms and then to use more acronyms here when you're doing stuff on cars and stuff, it gets really confusing. So, anyways, there's a screen back here. Which, believe it or not, the bolt is an Allen wrench. Tell me you don't want to die whenever you hear Allen wrench on an engine. Um, so I've got to... I don't know. I don't know. I, I won't know. I won't see it good until I loosen this guy. And the only ratchet I could get in here is a quarter inch. So... Uh, 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 I just can't... We have the stubby uh, Allen key sockets. The Allen keys. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, or you could cut one down and slip. You could cut it this side and put it on the end of a ratchet too. Right now, I just wish I could put some type of uh, you know pipe on here. Mark J, Bill Beckett are all here. Thank you for oh, Bill in. Beckett, what's happening? Hands what's on. happening, Bachi? I gotta find a pipe or something. I really need to get a hold of that guy, and I need some. I need some leverage. That's where I'm stuck at. Do you have a quarter inch breaker bar? <sighs> quarter inch breaker bar. I do, but they're all small and they're short. That's the thing that kills me. It's like just because it's quarter inch, guys, you don't have to make it short. Make it long, dang it! And I cannot fit a three eighths in there. So the the suggested procedure is to go on top of the engine, remove half of the bolts for the um power steering pump and then remove this bottom bolt but if you're able to remove just the bottom power steering pump bolt you can swing the power steering up just enough to get to that screw or bolt that i'm trying to get to so i'm trying to find some type of something that i can use as leverage here ah, lots of fun guys my diy project is throwing curveballs at me left and right right now oh yeah I was trying to do this without having to take a gas tank off, but I have to. <laughs> you guys will see that soon enough. So oh, man, I cannot. And you know what it is, too, is I could probably put a lot more strength on this, but when you have your car lifted on, um, you know, lifts, even though you do everything secure and safe and everything, it's, it's always a little scary to put that type of weight on it, you know? It's always a little scary. You don't want to do that. Plus, I got the dang brake line here. It's really annoying. Let's see if I can't pump this. <sighs> dang, I'm going to pull a muscle. It's really annoying in here. You're pulling a muscle with a car. Uh, there you go. Uh, I, think I, I think I loosened it. There you go. Hey, I've only been hit. I'm going to say it's an 8 millimeter. Hey. 
Success, guys. Success. I've only been fighting that bolt now for about, I don't know, 45 minutes. Uh, that that was satisfying. You got to put it back into it. <laughs> yeah, I know, bro. Thank you. Thank you. That, why don't you just, why don't you just stick the little finger at me? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dude, do, it's like, this way, what's that? You get a palm wheel and put a palm wheel back there and start it nice and easy. Or you can get your fingers in your Well, so on all the, all the screws here that have been like that, what I've been doing is taking a, uh, a small, a small extension and the socket. And that has been doing it for me. So, man, for all those people that be saying that the DIYers don't be doing the hard stuff, man, look at that. We, we, we knock out the good stuff, bro. We ain't playing around. We don't play around over here, man. I, I may not be a pro, but I take on whatever I can get my hands on. Right. Now, I, this customer, I don't know if you guys could see in there, but right right in there somewhere the 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 timing cover is leaking and uh i would love 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 to get the okay to rep to just uh redo it but i don't think i can do it without pulling the engine out i don't think this thing is made for you to do that level of work without taking everything out because man this is it is tied in here, and clearances. so, what was that now? You got tight clearances. Oh yeah, tight clearances. Um, anybody in the chat here? Let's see comments. Anybody say, "Oh, what's up, Power Stroke Jude? What's going on, brother? Bachi, what's going on? Yeah, Hands on mechanical. Brandon's East Coast here. Ken. What was that now? Brandon's here. BS Small Engines. BSS Small Engines. What's up, bro? What's going on? Uh, he. He, he hasn't liked me much lately. He says, that Ed guy, I can't stand him. He doesn't uh, sell me no Mexicoin. <laughs> Bill Beckett, what's going on, my brother, from another mother? Let's see. Yeah, that's that's. we don't have a lot of people on here, man. We got a small crowd. Huh? You guys are more than welcome. You know, that's, that's how we do here. Now, can you guys see okay? Is my camera sideways or is it up and down? Does it look really weird to you guys? Should I move my camera? Close. Say that again? Your light's better than it was. Oh yeah, yeah. I got a, I got my big Milwaukee light right here. I should go you get got, my other light. You got the little one, or you got the one on the stand? I got the one on the. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it good, but I got the. I got the stand. Yeah, we, had, we had some of those at work. They those didn't stay with us, but the batteries. Did. Yeah. All those guys would be like, "Oh, he's a he's a Makita guy, and he's this and that." Look, guys, I use all kinds of tools, man. I I use whatever. Anything to get the job done, man. My uh, co let's get her done. Coworker got the new Dewalt ratchet in. Oh, really? He had tons and tons of work all day long. He did not even get to use his new tool. He got. He waited three weeks for. <laughs> for <whatever. laughs> I'm like, really? What a I'm, I, I don't like when you buy a new tool and you don't get to use it right away. Well, I don't know. I. What's the What's the big deal with that? Uh. What's the big deal with that? With that DeWalt one? Is it? Is it? Oh. Is it good? Is it banging or what? What's going on with it? I got to physically touch and play with it. It seems about the same speed as a snap on to me. Uh, but since he is on the, he has the Mac stuff, so the batteries interchange, which is kind of nice. But the footprint alone on the battery and is huge. It's really big. It's okay. Really, really big. Like. It's bigger than this cell phone, basically, on the battery, on the crypto, and everything. So. See, that's, I don't understand that, right? Like, well, then they better start making these ratchet heads small, because look at, look at the clearances I, I have to work here with. I'd say look it's this. comparable to the of the Gen 2, not the newer ones they just came out with. Well, look at the clearances we have to, we have to work with here. So I, I still say it makes the best cordless ratchet. Oh, man, look at this. I can't. I can't find how to how to put this on here. 
Yeah, I think he paid 170 or 180 for a bear tool only. Man. Oh. I want to put you a speed test. I work with some lag bolts. <laughs> oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is a lot of fun. Look at that. This, That's this not the right car, size, is it? You've had this car for going on two weeks, I think. Now, right? Well, yeah, I was waiting for parts and OKs to do certain things. Um, so it, it just sat around. I did. I did have a lot of time to do research, and I don't. Uh, I don't accept to work on cars unless I have all the time I want to take, and I do it the way I want to do it. I, I look. It, it's it's it, it, as a DIYer. I can do. It's my prerogative. I can do whatever I want. Right? Like, I'll yes, I'm charging you, Mister Customer. But if you don't want to do it my way, then please go to a shop. I can't. I'm not the guy that could turn it around in one day or two days or whatever. That's not me, right? That's what shops are for. Mm -hmm. The history that I'm, I'm you, this vehicle has been through the ringer, and it's it's a victim of a shoddy mechanical work. Like. Oh, bro. Well, let's let's talk about that a little bit, right? So this 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 is a 2009 Camry again, right? 2.4 liter engine, LE, US version. So this guy has been to dealers and shops for all of its repairs. The level, the level of mistreatment and bad work I have found is horrible. Again, I, I've said this in videos and I'll say it again. This is not indicative of every shop. This is not indicative of most shops. It just or seems that. every dealership either. Or every dealership, right? Yeah. When I say shop, I meant dealership too. I was trying to, yeah, try to combine that. But... You would assume when you're getting your car service at the dealership, those are the highest trained professionals for your brand you're bringing them. Well, technically, yes, right? They're supposed but, to be, right? Anyway. They're supposed to be right, but um, when it when it when it came to this car, I I I have never seen the amount of shoddy work that I have seen. The motor mounts were installed; they were just jammed in. They weren't were even. They, were they backwards? They were not backwards. They were not backwards. So they have they have arrows, right? Like there's an arrow there. I don't know if you guys could see it. There's an arrow right there in that motor mount. Kind of tells you which way it should go and how it should be positioned. Plus, it's got legs. I don't know. I know that's kind of tough to see right now with the shining light on it. But there's a. It's got legs. One towards the back. One towards the. I mean, well, I should say one towards the front. One to the two sides. And it 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 won't let you install it incorrectly. Like you gotta be. You gotta force it. What I ended up finding out was in the tra the transmission mount. That guy was forced in. And when it was forced in, because, you know, it's got studs. It's got, like, these studs that go into the frame, and that's how you bolt in, right? So they well, the forced it in. To begin with. They were just forcing things into place. They just forced that guy in. Now, the front motor mount, the side motor mount were installed correctly. The dog bone was installed somewhat correctly. They should have noticed when they installed the dog bone that it was stretching, even though the car was in park. That should have given them the indic indication of, uh oh, better put this back on the lift and readjust those motor mounts or check them again. And they didn't. They let it fly like that. What they told the customer was that if they just drove it like that for a while, the new motor mounts are always a little rough, uh, rough for wear until they, they wear in a little bit. And then after they wear in, there's a break in period. There's a break in period. That's the, that's the line they gave. And, uh, what a what a bad line because you know I I don't know I I consider myself somewhat of a smart guy but if somebody would have told me that I would have been like well I could almost go for that well I guess let, let, I'll give you a couple weeks and if it don't fix I'll bring it back well this customer didn't bring it back for a whole year plus and then they blamed her and said no no you messed them up you you did something and I'm like what could you do to break to, to mess up motor mounts. There's nothing you can do. They, 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 um, they do wear out. I mean, the bushings and stuff do and all that. I mean, sure, but in a year? No. <laughs> in a year? And, 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 and they didn't put in 50,000 miles in a year or 60. I think some, what? Uh, some crazy potholes. <laughs> what are you? Uh, oh, man, this, this, this guy is just going to fight me the whole way, aren't you? This is going to be not a fun one. I am going to have to take out this dang uh, power steering pump as much as I don't want to take them out. 
Well, maybe you can swing it out of the way. I mean, just don't open the lines. Uh, now, now my socket's stuck. Great. And so I wanted to go with the little one, and uh, it's just stuck by a little bit. I'm going to have to get him out of there. I'm going to have to force him out. But, yeah, anyways, they, they gave her a lot of work. So what am I doing? I'm, I'm, I told her I'm going to take it on, but I'm going to be very, very, like, meticulous about all the things I change and how I do it. And so it took me, took me, it took me about a day, about a day to do the motor mounts. Now it's, it's, it's really about an hour job. It doesn't take that long, but I was very careful. I, I felt that the frame was a little, it wasn't, I'm bent is not the right word, but you could tell it was, they, they put some stress on it the way they put the motor mounts and the engine on top of it, it, it felt it, like it, it had some stress has, on it. Uh, it has stress wear. Is what I yeah, was yeah. In your position, you didn't want to naturally be. Right, right, and uh, it's something I can uh, see oh, fine. for what I do. It would not have been a good idea there, and I don't like it anymore after a certain amount of time. Yeah, uh, I think I messed up, dude. Uh, well, I think I messed up. Uh, you got ratchet wrenches in. Oh, I, my socket stuck in there and the bolt has kind of come out. So now I'm in trouble. Now I'm in trouble. That's what I get. Should have so used the uh, socket is stuck on there. Yeah, I'm going to have to get this belt completely out of the way. It's really annoying me now. Here, what could you do? Could you zoom in on where, where your socket is? Oh, yeah. Hold on. Let me let me get the belt completely out of the way. Let me get this belt. It's, it's really annoying me. It's going to make me mad that I'm going to have to reroute this whole belt, but whatever. Hold on. I'm on, I'm on something over here. Let's see. Uh, I guess the power steering pump can't go the other way. It can't go back. It can only go uh, uh, one way. You'd think it would it's going to go backwards here. But, oh, yeah, baby. Socket fell right out. That's what it needed. Needed to get that thing uh, belt out of the way. This is where I need one of those magnet. Ah, uh... oh, dang, dude! Uh, it's magnet. just like you said. Uh, so, if you it. want, uh, Lang Tools makes a little magnetic inserts. You can put them in the bottom of your sockets. Yeah. I don't yeah. know how to do I haven't used them yet, but I know they make them. I've always just glued yeah. this in the bottom of the pocket. Oh, come on, dude. Look at this bolt. There's no room in here. There really is no room. Yeah, see, see, Ed, this is why uh, mechanics hate engineers. They just fit it all in a box. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, what a pain. But I, it was my understanding that this, this portion back here, is like on a hook. It's not supposed to grab on. It's like a like a hook method. It's not a. I hope I've got the right uh, bolt. That that seems like the bolt that's supposed to grab it. Uh, all right, sir. Jude's got a question for you, Ed. What's that? Uh, how do you determine how much to charge for your work? Oh, that's a damn good question, bro. Um, so my my customers. Our friends, family, people, people I know, or people that have been recommended to me, they're, they're a private class of customer. Um, I don't charge by the hour. I charge by the job. So let's say I did the, I, I did replace the harmonic balancer right there. I replaced that. Now I normally charge about, uh, I don't know, 150, 150 to replace that harmonic balancer if it's not hard. Um, I could charge 200. On a on a Honda where I have to set the timing or something like that, then I would charge a lot more. But uh, about you know anywhere about hundred to two hundred bucks depending on depending on the car and type and such. But it's the job. Now if it's somebody I know and I like and you know it's it's all that stuff, then it's like you know I can't be mean. I can't be mean. You know what I mean? I gotta I I gotta give them a deal, right? So that. It, it, it depends, right? Like family, friends, people I know, they, they get a bigger discount. I, and, and that's the majority of my work. I don't do it. 
uh, you anybody that that has been watching this channel and has been watching me for any amount of time knows I have a full time career as a network engineer and I, I I work in the tech world right, but I do side work and side work and stuff that I like and I like to work on cars, and I like <laughs> I don't mind making extra money when I work on cars either, but but um you know it's uh. It, it, it's a, that's a hard question. It's easier said than done. <laughs> it's an easier, uh, you know, it, it's easier for you guys as mechanics to kind of figure that out. You guys have like a, an understanding of what you should charge at a shop. I don't, I have to ask my friend Mo, like what's fair. My friend Mo has a shop. He owns a shop and he's, he gives me advice sometimes, but uh, I reward him with sometimes when I can't take on something, like if this one seems too big for me right here and I end up quitting saying I can't do it. I take it to his shop. <laughs> I end up taking it to his shop and saying, I'm done, bro. I can't do it. Um, this is past my capabilities. And uh, he gets fat work. But for the most part, I don't usually give up easy. Oh, Jude, what's happening? He, he did come on here. What's going on, guys? We got Brandon in the chat. Jay who? Uh, text talking shop. That was me, guys. <sighs> East Coast, yep. Ken, Miss Carol, Hands On Mechanical, Mark J. J. Who? 9222, Bachi, JWC Tech. Yep. Now, now, guys, don't let them fool you. Don't let them fool you. The J, that J. Who guy, he likes to work on cars, too, and he's dang good at it. He likes to act like he don't know nothing because he don't want people asking him to work on his on their cars. But he's dang good at it, bro. He's dang good at it. He, he, he's get, he's going to get real quiet right now because he's like, I am not going to go help Ed. I am not going to go help him right now. That's okay. He doesn't have to, but don't let him fool you. That's another DIY right there that can handle his handle his tools really well. Brandon has a question. It says, Yo. anyone, anyone got solution for popping loose a stuck door on a Honda Civic? I pop up the panel and still can't be free. I'm about to cut off the striker plate. <laughs> All right, I am not a body guy, bro. I wouldn't even know what to tell you on body work. In question right there. Yeah. Eek, if you're in the if you're in the chat still. Hey, Eek, yeah, where's Eek when you need him? What kind of special tools did you have to buy to set the timing on Hondas? What? What what kind of special tool you need to buy? Man, you just all you got to do is set the set it to the timing marks on the V6. That's it. There's timing marks. Now, there is a tool so that the gears don't move. Um, but I don't have that and I should have it. But that's there's timing lock, marks on all the, the bolts. You talking about the tool to lock the cams in place? That that's right. There's a cam lock bolt. There's a cam lock kit or something like that. That mostly, guy right there, mostly, you can buy that. Yeah, like if you have anything that's uh -huh. dual overhead cams or some kind of like a lot of Chrysler's uh, have it, but uh, yeah, you you there's kits you can get. You can usually find them on eBay or or Amazon, even relatively inexpensive, and it'll it'll lock the cam. Sorry, I wonder if I. I'm wondering if I took off the wrong bolt. I think I took off the right bolt, but <laughs> raging cage. I can't tell. Uh, raging cage. Jamie saying, "Don't cut the striker, please." Don't cut the striker. You can't say, Brandon, I have to oh, you know what? send me a short video on it. He described what he's doing. It's not It's not opening. It's stuck. <sighs> Dang, man. This, you, know, you know what makes it hard is this is metal right here. Can't take this plate off. This is pure metal. I think I'm going to have to let this go. Tighten that bolt up and just forget it. What are you trying to do? Um, I was back and forth doing stuff. What, what I see, I see you're on the. It looks like uh, look, look to do the wheel well right now. Uh, yeah, yeah. But hey, where'd it go? I know I saw it. Where'd it go? Bolted. No, I did not. It, I can't get it out. I'm hitting the. I'm hitting the the wall. Um, but. Night, I was down here earlier and I identified where that screen is. There's so Jude, what I'm trying to do is there is a solenoid variable timing 
oil um, screen filter here. So you've got that guy that I just mentioned up there. It's up above on the top portion of the engine. Underneath it. Or is this that Camry? It's still that Camry. I'm yeah. still working on that Camry. I'm doing everything to this thing. It's, 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 uh, I know I had, I had seen that dang bolt. I was like, oh, there it is. I'm, no, I'm not dreaming. Let me, uh, let me put the light over here. That's what I need. What light are you working oh. with? There it is. Dang it. That guy is really right there. <laughs> so, okay. So I've got my Milwaukee behind me, my Milwaukee stand like stick. I've got my r easy red light right here. That's a two for forty five. That's a two for forty five right there. Yeah. Uh, these are not that good. They run out of power fast. I they, they yeah, really the could have been better. They get knocked around pretty easily too. Yeah, that, the magnet gets knocked around. Perfect to put on the top of your tool cart lid or your toolbox lid. And you can have a light shining down as you look as you're looking into your toolbox. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. I agree with that. And and or or, or you know what? It's also kind of good as uh when you're making a YouTube video and you just need a light somewhere, it's really good at that. Okay, so that variable time screen that I'm talking about, I don't know if you could see this right here. This is th where I have my finger. That's the power steering pump uh pulley. See it right here. Right behind the steering pump pulley, there is an Allen wrench that goes into the engine like this and that's an the Allen one you can you can find a fastener that uses an allen allen socket that's key. right that's right the second the second it's an allen it's an allen keyed uh, um fastener. bolt okay fastener that's up what, what, there what size, what size and, does it use can you tell uh, oh, i i it. can't even tell it's i'm guessing just eight by million. looking at looking at what the the, the the tight spot you got I'm guessing uh -huh. you probably need a, a ball head, Allen, to, to, to get in there. You look uh -huh. like a straight shot. In those but, ball heads, but, but I can't. But I can't get it out. So this this right here, this is the power steering uh, pulley, right? So this guy, I read online that if you undo the bottom bolt, it should it should swing like swing upward and give you the space you need to do it. But I'm starting to notice that that's that may not actually be a thing. I. I may be dreaming. <laughs> I'm because that bolt. I can't even pull the bolt out because it's hitting the uh, the wall here. When I put the bolt, Jehu, the last emoji you did was a finger pointing. Uh, six percent recycled. Uh, hello, welcome Jay to the channel. What do you see? I like happy emoji. And hands on mechanical said he backed himself into a corner with a ratchet. Yeah, that sucks when you do that. Not... Yeah, I hate when that happens, man. It's that guy. So, I don't know if you guys could see it. Let's see if I can't get you in here. You guys, uh, you know. Jay, well, there's a hundred ways to get broken bolts uh, besides vice grips, just so you know. I don't know. Can you guys see that in there? I don't know how good you can see, but see the bolts sticking out? And, uh, Hold on, hold on. I know how to do this so you can see it. I'm going to have to carry you guys. Put you by hand here. All right. I don't know. Can you see up in there now? And that bolt that's that sticking out right there? Yeah, you see that bolt sticking out? It's hitting the wall. <laughs> I can't. I'm stuck. I'm, I'm right about to just tighten it and call it a day and say, forget it. All the way out, Ed, or are you trying to put it back in? What are you trying to do here? Well, I wanted to take it all the way out because supposedly if I can do that, that whole power, the whole power steering pump will swing, um, will swing out, allowing me to get to this Allen. Now let me, how this, this more, Allen how bolt. How many more do you have that bolt in by? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that question, but okay, look. Uh, up, I don't know if this is going to go up in there. You can almost do that by hand now. Uh, can you see the Allen? Can you see the Allen bolt or fastener? Are you guys able to see it? Uh, gonna Go him up, Anthony. How do I do that? <clears throat> um, on his icon at the bottom, click click on the top left corner of it, the little shadow part. Uh, solo layout. Yeah. All right. Well, you see the pulley. A little bit to the left, you've got that 
that cylinder looking piece. You've got that 10 millimeter holding that hose right behind that underneath it is the dang Allen for that screen to, to collect any gunk in the oil. All right. And <laughs> according to what I understand, you'll be able to swing this out. It's either that, or you got to take out the whole power steering pump. But the fun part is I can't take out the power steering pump because I can't even get this bolt out of the way. I'm hitting the firewall right there. So I've got a couple options. Wait one second. Hey, Jay, who's in the chat? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. You may have to. Let me see. Am I looking at the top right now? Of the engine? No, this is the bottom. This is the bottom underneath. We're looking up. We're looking up. Okay. Yeah. See, look, there's the. There's the there we go. I, yeah. see. I thought, okay. Jay, who one time, months, years, a couple years ago, jumped on a uh -huh. with uh, Miguel Martinez and I. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure he was working on a Toyota doing a power steering pump. He was, <laughs> was he? Yes. Okay. Uh huh. And he, if he's in. Ah. <sighs> I don't think I've worked on this vehicle like so or anything, but I'd have to be there to get a good view to see tell you what to do. I just start I'll be honest, and I start taking stuff that's in the way, I take it and move it. So what you do oh, well, is you can run the bolt back in, Ed, and just take a uh -huh. file to it and just get the clearance you need. Well manipulate the motor. Uh, <laughs> you you want me to drill right? Scuba Steve, you, you want me to drill right through the uh, right through the frame and and uh, hey, uh, <laughs> make the holder? It's the second link. I think um, it's the second link that I sent. I sent two. Yeah, I, I could do that, but you know what? Chances are the screen doesn't even need to be changed at this point. I'm just being anal about it. I don't have a code that's indicating that it needs to be changed. And if it's going to be that much trouble, I'll, I'll call it. Right? I was just, I want to be thorough. And I'm very picky about how I do stuff. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Camry 1 at 0. <laughs> no. No, wrong, wrong. Uh, Cam Camry, I mean, Ed, many. Oh, I've, I've won many. This is one. Uh, what was that? Motor mounts on. Yeah, look. Look at the brand new motor mounts. Oh, hold on a second. Look at that motor mount. Brand spanking new, bro. Brand. I took all the shake out of it. I've, Bro. Okay, so <laughs> let's, uh, let's take a break here while we... I should probably look around. I hope I didn't take out the wrong boat. That's what I'm worried about. I don't think it should be that long. This thing is very long. I don't think it should be that long to hold on the things, power, uh, the power steering pump, right? I hope I didn't take something important out. <laughs> well, that, you're, you're just looking at the. the uh, okay. Uh, all right. So from the beginning, whew, man, I'm gonna need this this light over here, aren't I? All right, I changed the lenses out on this thing. Look at that. Brand new lenses. I fixed the bumper. The bumper was all loose and stuff. It was going to fall off. Oh, look at that that fancy jack, man. Look at that. Ooh, what's going on? Um, I got the same. Dude, I've done, I've done all the mounts to it. I've done nothing but work on this guy. This this thing is uh, it's running really good right now. I, I, I may have to... I may have to either stop right here and come back to it because I do got to research again on the internet really quick to see how that uh, power steering pump is supposed to swing out, if, it, if that's the right bolt. But it's driving me nuts. What's up, fellas? <clears throat> What's up, dude? How you doing, Nick? Uh, it, it's definitely been a Monday. Me too. I'm up, up, in, I'm up in a debate as far as the D we're talking DIY. I just got my confirmation about this motor I've been haggling with. 
they'll take my offer now, but I'm just like, is it really worth it? I've been trying to get a, a old school bobber built for five years, and this is finally the right price point for an old motor. I'm just like, do I drop the hammer on this? No, no email, sir. Um, yeah, I'll resend it, man. Give me a second. So, B. Yeah, I'm not going on, Jim. So, how was your Monday, Ken? <laughs> well, I woke up to a text message from my oldest kid saying one of the dogs basically exploded all over the living room. So I was late to class because I had to clean that up. And I didn't even get to finish cleaning it all up. I got like 95% of it done. And I left it soaking. Came home, finished it. All right. And went to the garage to grab something. And it happened again in the garage. So I literally pulled just about 75% of my garage out into the driveway tonight. And I was cleaning from 515 till 945. What's wrong? What's wrong with the dog? No idea. What kind of dog is it? Yeah, it's an older female pit bull. She's twelve. Okay, so we're it's not definitely quite, not Parvo. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're definitely we're not sure which one it is, but we've got two crates. I'll now. be right back, guys. We went and got another crate tonight. Um, we're gonna put them in it and try to figure it out. Good luck with that. I have worked in the animal hospital before, and it's. Trial and error. It could be diet. It could be they're old. They need to be looked at themselves just like we do. How's your Monday been, Jude? Uh, I probably... I was productive. I mean, I spent half the... Well, first part of the morning in the office because we were busy writing some tickets up and help, helping that. And then I went outside and I probably knocked out about 12 hours in about six or so. Yeah. Give, give or take. That's a good Monday. Yeah. It's better than my Monday was. I was cutting pipe and threading pipe and building a new air system at work. Running a one inch piping and threading pipe, sweating pipe and doing all this fun stuff. External coolant systems are blowing out and all this fun stuff. Favorite part of the day. They said it's broke. Okay, go fix it. Okay. That's what I do. That's what we all do, man. Yeah. The problem is I'm the one that keeps doing it more and more. <laughs> Here, here's my thing. This is just my advice to people. Now, I don't mean this. This is a generalization. I'm not talking to anybody in particular, so don't don't take offense to how it comes out. But what I always tell people, like, for instance, I'll use my brother as an example. He's a truck driver. And now he just drives, does his thing, whatever, you know, because he's he's got a route. But before he was a yard guy who would move the trucks back and forth to the dock. It was a busy company. They had a lot, a lot of a lot of trailers. They had to back in, you know, put the empty ones at the dock, move them, move the full ones out. And he would always complain about this one dude who he couldn't stand and said that he would get in shouting matches with each other, you know, mother effing each other, because my brother would say, tell him, Man, I'm doing, I don't know the numbers, but I'm doing eight trailers and you're doing two. You know, this is BS. You got to do this. You got to do that. And the other guy would be like, well, I just do what I, what I, what I'm told to do. You know, I'm getting, hey, what's up, Cass? I'm, I'm getting done. I got to get done. It, 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 so what I would tell my brother is, dude, if you want him to do more, I'm well, then you've got to work harder and become his boss. <laughs> Or you've just got to ignore him and do what you want to do. You can slow down to do what he's doing, 
or you can keep doing what you're doing and just do your job and get through your day. If you worry about what other people are doing all day long, man, it's, it's going to make you old real quick. No, I, I don't actually have anything negative to say about that. It's just people get worried about other people all the time at work. Because some people turn into the bubble of, I do more, you do less. That's of exactly what I'm talking about. It, it, you got to tell them. Just do what you got to do, get your job done, and go home. Mm -hmm. Depending on what they're being at, what you're being asked of, some stuff doesn't even fall into your wheelhouse. Some days, like some of the stuff I do, doesn't fall into my wheelhouse. But all I look at it, I look at it as like, okay, I don't know this, but it's an opportunity to learn a new skill or a new process to fix something. That's how I look at things. How do you look at that as the boss, Cass? When you see, do, do you pay attention to who's doing more work? No, I'm just trying to keep up. I'm fortunate. You know, it's just Robert and I really in the shop. Travis is in the office. So I just need to make sure if he's at a, if he's stuck on something, I got to hop over there and help him out. But, you know, he does pretty well at what he does. I mean, he's on commission. So you're basically you're self-policing. I would love to be home at 10 a.m., Jehu. <laughs> yeah, do self-policing. When you're on commission, you have to because you're not working. You're not getting paid. You're not, you're not going to make your money. So. All right. I'm back, guys. I'm back. All right. I just needed to double-check the diagram. You've, you've yep. got, your, I've, I've got your guys here now, man. Ask your question. I guarantee you you'll get your answer. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I've got the right bolt. I've got the right bolt. Now it's the... Now I, I'm I'm gonna have to do one or two things, right? I'm gonna have to either loosen the top bolt so that I can get a little wiggle room and get that bolt out of the way, or I'm gonna have to take that top bolt off too and then just take the whole steering pump off. But that's 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 the fun of it. That's what I'm having. So, Cass, I, I hate to run everybody through this again, but you've got one <laughs> bolt. You've got one bolt. Let's see what ninety five percent out, dude. Just take it out. Yeah, I know, but. It, no, no, it's not that easy, bro. I'm, I'm sticking. I'm hitting the frame. <laughs> I'm hitting the body. That's the problem. It's not a. Uh, I just noticed, and it does hit the body. I just, I just so checked it really quick. I it and force it back enough and take it out. I, I could do that, but uh, I may have to do something like that. I kind of don't want to do that. <laughs> is this, is this your on. DI? Is this gonna be your DIY video, Ed, where you have to call tech support? <laughs> This is uh tech support. <laughs> this is this has been my fun one. This has been a rough one. It's it, it's had a lot of bad work done to it. So so I'm gonna you know at, at the sake of repeating myself. This is a 2009 uh, Toyota Camry 2.4 liter engine, four cylinder with uh, four motor mounts. I just did the motor mounts. Look at that, how pretty they are, and they are very well aligned something that most people i i don't know why they, they whoever installed them didn't do it right they, they weren't aligned right they i found out that the transmission mount was the one that was installed incorrectly it was torqued and forced in and it was causing a lot of the trouble here the other thing that was causing the trouble was the harmonic balancer that's replaced um so <laughs> i went ahead and <laughs> i went ahead and replaced the pcv valve right there mm -hmm. and i went ahead and replaced the uh, VVT or VTT, the variable timing, uh, uh, solenoid. Uh, solenoid. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So I replaced him, but there's a screen on the bottom that keeps it clean and unclogged so that I could try to clean up some of that rough idle that it has. Now the car has 157,000 miles on it. So I think I'm justified in doing some of this work. Uh, the, now I don't have to, I could, I could stop right here and say, ah, I've done enough. The car is running really smooth right now, but I mean, I have it. In, I have it here. I might as well do it. So here's the here's the power steering pump. That's the power steering pump. The bolt right here on the bottom that holds the power steering pump like a hanger is this one. There's one on the top there. Okay, it, it's hitting the so it's hitting the frame here. See that? It's hitting right there. Right under that frame, man. It's hitting right there. Now, I could probably do what, what Anthony's saying is kind of give it a little heave-ho and try to try to get it to come down, maybe even turn on the car and put it in drive or something. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, you know, probably, you know, crowbar <laughs> something. 
I'm glad, you, I'm glad you caught that as a joke. I'm glad you caught that as a joke. So, All right. So, the, uh, so just to this. let you know, if you can't get it, if you can't heave ho it, then you're going to have to take the mount off. The one that your hand's resting on? Yes, yes. I'm going to have to take this motor mount off. Oh, boy, I don't want to do that after torquing it to, to spec and everything. Okay, the right behind it, right behind it, underneath this, right where my finger is, you can't even see it. I can't even get you the phone right in there, is an Allen, um, an, an, an Allen screw there or bolt or whatever, fastener. It's right underneath there, and that holds a little plastic screen that filters the oil before it goes into the solenoid. Right. Now the solenoid didn't look really that dirty when I pulled it. I mean, it was kind of worn. You could see it was beat up. It had age on it. It, it had lots of oil spillage from the dealership did the, um, what do you call that gasket? The head gasket up on top. They did the, 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 valve, the valve cover, cover valve covered gasket. Yes, sir. Sorry. They did the valve covered the gasket, tons of oil all over the, the solenoid and all kinds of other stuff. I'm guessing this screen is clean. I'm, you know, I'm 10 seconds from giving up and saying, I doubt that the screen is dirty, but, you know, I could have. Uh, I would bet you dollars to donuts that that screen's not dirty. I would bet you. I'd bet you the same thing. I'm like Where's 10 seconds old, from. Do you, have the old, do you have the old VVT solenoid? Oh, yeah. Let me see if I can get it for you. All right. <clears throat> Is anyone else <clears throat> Nazi on certain stuff they work on besides me? What's that? As far as depending on what you're working on, like head gas, ah. on my stuff on my bike. Uh, since I'm holding it with my hands on my bike, or do I go by the old two finger tight system? I torque everything. Yeah, Good. there it is, Cass. All right, uh, spin me around. Now I did what give it a wipe with the with the cloth. Was it leaking out of the body? Um, or there's was it oily, oil. Is it was it oily where your fingers are, or was it coming out? Of the yes, body? yes, yes. See, right. see how there's oil there, even though I wiped it with a cloth. Yeah. There's oil there. All right, I like I said, I would bet you that there's nothing wrong with that. If you wanted to, what you could do. Is if you wanted to look and see, because they see that little rod that's in the middle of all the, the little uh, maze there. Uh huh. All right. If you wanted to, you could apply power and ground to that, and then it would actuate the rod, and then you could see if there was any scoring on that little rod or that piston. And that okay. would tell you, like, hey, do I have a problem? Because if that screen tears, then you're going to get debris up there. But that screen is meant to keep debris from coming up there. That's most right. Of the time, most of the time, what happens whenever you get debris up there is whenever somebody does a repair and there's, like, silicone on the car and they just go and they use, a like, a uh, some kind of angle grinder and they go and silicone – they go and buzz the silicone off. And it, mm -hmm. gets, it gets in a fine powder and oil – in the oil pan and then it goes up and it clogs up that screen. I would bet you if, right. the, if the engine's not real like gunky, it's probably gonna mm -hmm. be fine. Because it probably comes probably gets oil pressure from if I were to guess from like the filter, it's probably pretty early filtered oil that's going through that screen up to that VDT solenoid. Because it's gotta have oil pressure to control the cam timing. So it's not like it's running through the motor and going all these crazy distances and then going back, I bet you it's pretty close to being pre-screen or, you know, uh, uh, early oil, filtered oil. But I, I, if you want to be the ultimate DIY guy, you'll keep going. You Don't know me, bro. You okay. know me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, all right, you can take me off main screen here, bro. <laughs> you know me, dude. I, uh, I, 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 I aim to do all kinds of stuff, bro. I, I, I usually am not scared to do stuff, but I, it's not that I'm scared. Right. It's that I've got a lot of time and money into this already. And yeah. uh, I'll tell you this. The best way to do this, instead of going and prying and poking and prodding, take the mount uh -huh. off. Take the mount off? Okay. Yeah. That's that, a tomorrow that's job the, then. That's the best yep. way to do it. Because <laughs> if you don't take the mount off, mm -hmm. you, go, you pry and you break something, well, guess what? You got to fix it. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! 
You could also oh. take a sawzall and put a C channel in that frame. Come on, dude. I am not that kind of guy, bro. I don't do that kind of work. Oh, and then get a new bowl to it. <laughs> I am not that kind of guy. I mean I I'm I'm guessing I could also take a little bit of a, a crowbar and move the engine, you know, angle it a little bit towards the back like it does when it's revving, right? Give a little bit of that angle and see if it's just enough for me to... You loosen up to, the front. You can loosen up the front mount and then rock it back to the pry bar off the, the place where you would pick the you engine You can up. shift it like this. Yeah. Oh, bro, the, you don't know the level of pain it was to do these mounts already because the guy that put them in before, you could tell he put them in with a gun and he just slammed them in there. And you know when they're not aligned correctly, they were. it, it was just a bad job. Oh, dude, I'm like 10 seconds from saying hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> With the screen. It's just a screen. Frig it. <laughs> oh. Anyways, the, the joys of DIY techs. And, there you guys go. And here's the other thing to think about, too. So if mm -hmm. the screen, if it's a plastic housing with the screen inlaid yes, on it, it and you take it off and you clean it, and if you break the screen, well, then you're going to have to go get a new screen anyway. Well, I, I I have one on order. It comes in the morning. Oh, okay. Well, then, then yeah. put the new one on there. Don't try to clean the old one. Oh, no, I'm not trying to clean it. I'm trying to oh, okay. loosen everything and have it ready for me to work on it first thing in the morning. Just slap it in and close it because, really, I'm at the, I'm at the last pieces of this job being done. Um, the only thing left is to remove the seats because they want to remove the seats because they want it fully detailed on the inside. So, um you do detail work to it? No, I'm not doing the detail work. No, 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 no. No, that's um, I'm not breaking my back no more. Can't do that. <laughs> well, you're breaking your back right now, trying to get this bolt out. Yeah, tell me about it, bro. Tell me about it. But hey, listen, where else do you get this level of content, man? This is this is real real life working on cars here. This isn't that stuff you get on these other channels with guys that wear helmets or guys that uh, talk a big game and show tools this is this is real life right here man oh, are you so dogging chris fix no i am not talking chris fix i like chris fix just saying, i'm just saying who wears a helmet <laughs> there's lots of people that wear helmets and glasses and uh, you know they also wear like like uh, graphical costumes you know th there's there's all kinds of people no 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 don't don't put <laughs> I've got a question for you, Ed. Yeah, We're go ahead. Pretty much all in agreement that the quickest way to do this right now is to remove that motor mount or at least loosen it up, right? Yep. How much longer are you going to waste trying to fidget with it and get it out before you end up having to do that anyhow? Because we all know you're not going to let that screen go and you're going to end up doing it. <laughs> oh, no, no, I know. But all the motor mounts force it down and. Or lift it up just to get clear. Really, all he needs to take that 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 one right there, and there's probably another one up top, like a like a, str a torque strut. Yeah, that's, take, it's a, it's up here. Two, yeah, you just need to take those two off. It'll drop down a half an inch, and you'll be able to get the bolt out. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No. 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 I I got no issue with that. That makes sense. I saw the minute I saw the bolt hit the frame, I knew, and I, I was hoping that that wasn't the answer. But um, I'm not sure. going to do that. I'm not going to do that right now in the middle of the night. I'm, I'm calling it for, for the night. I have, I have a question that, that what's happening. Cass probably can answer for me. I haven't come across a whole crap ton of vehicles that the motor mount uh, bolts are torqued to yield. I did recently. Have you seen that Cass? The actual, well, I mean, kind of torque to yield is a, as far as like angle torque on them? Well, it was, uh, yeah, it was, uh, okay, I believe it was the, a 17 uh, Explorer. And like you, it, you, you torqued it, you, you, I don't remember the whole thing. You backed it off and then you ended up doing a, a 90 on it. I, I'd never seen, I've seen that plenty on, but not on a, not on a motor mount, not a, a engine mount. Yeah. I think I think Neil was talking about something like this, dude, where he did like a double torque to yield, where they said you torque it here, you back it off, and then you torque it another ninety on one of the one of the jeeps or something. He was working on. Well, this was a, a 
2017 Explorer. I haven't seen that. I think it was Explorer. Yeah. We we'll have to. We'll have to get Lindsay to ask Garrett because you know Garrett used to service the, all the the police vehicles. Uh, Garrett okay. Seasing. And so he worked on a bunch of explorers. That's where he got that little wrench from. He's got like, did you ever watch his tool his uh, toolbox tour? Oh yeah, yeah. He's got that little crazy looking ratchet wrench. That and that's where he got that from. Yeah, because he used to work at the city of Austin, working on all the cop cars. Oh okay, I remember him saying something about that. That he, his videos were pretty cool. I saw that one. Uh, I know he did like a he had, he had a I guess everybody's got their own application for the way they use stuff, but he had a funky little uh, tool cart, like not 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 very uh, traditional. <laughs> yeah, but he's working on like motorcycles and scooters. Yeah, like so. mopeds and stuff like that. Yeah, so it kind yeah. of it, it worked for him. But yeah, he's got the uh, pick of the litter right there. Anthony, you got to go through with move, check the chat. Keep hitting the. Uh, I'm looking through it right now. <laughs> oh, is Anthony in charge tonight on the chat? Yeah, I I, I didn't know I was signing up for all this. <laughs> Sorry, he's working on the same Toyota. Uh, we got Sarah jumped in here. Hey, Mike, I I don't know if you got that other email. I sent it three times, uh, dude. Yes, uh, Greasy Monkey's still in here. Yeah, I I sent him a few emails. Uh, I. It's the same one I sent you guys. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sayer, he's still working on the same Toyota. <coughs> Who's all still here? Got Jehu. Hey, you guys make that sound like it's uh, it's like it's the same Toyota, guys. Listen, it's, <laughs> I'm a DIYer. I don't have a shop. I don't have a lift, and um, uh, that's that's the agreement I have with my customers. It's I do it my way or no way at all. Take it to the shop. <laughs> well, aren't you like working on this after you get off from your? Well, you work your your job and then you deal with have you know hang out with your family and then you kind of do this in the dark. That, that's right. That's the fun part. <laughs> this is side work, right? This is all. There you go. There you go. Take the resin to Home Depot. Get some blades, Ed. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I read that as take it to Harley Davidson. Take, take what to Harley Davidson? <laughs> when I read that, I'm with like, Harley Davidson right now. Like, it's been a long day. Oh, you said you thought the HD was Harley Davidson? <laughs> I'm not happy with Harley Davidson right now. Sayer, howdy, howdy, howdy. Hmm. Ed's making more work out of the Toyota job than he needs to right now. Oh, that that's okay though, man. That's how I that's how I do stuff. When you're gonna bring me something like this that I've got to now this has been to two two or three dealerships and and shops. Okay. I'm basically working behind everybody and I'm like I'll I'll be honest with you guys. You know, I'm sitting here thinking the shops and these guys obviously know more than I do. Right. They're, they're, they're professionals. Right. And it's like you guys, like when I talk to you guys, you guys know your stuff you, and you know it really well. Um, I'm sitting here saying, I'm going to fix it this way, but am I right? <laughs> they didn't catch it. So why would I not, you know, why would I think it's right? I better double, triple, quadruple check what I'm doing. And that's why it also takes me longer because I don't trust what I'm doing because I just don't have the training. Hey, I'd, I'd like double and triple check myself all the time. It's not that I. That's like, the way to do it. It's not that I don't <laughs> trust myself. Is you never know what happens. You don't know if parts fail. Yeah. You know, did you forget a bolt? Yeah. Oof. I did that today. Uh, 480 high voltage uh, wiring. Double check, double check, double check. Because at the end of the day, when I leave. Someone else has to hit the switch and make sure that motor runs or that that cabinet runs or something is done correctly, and it's very scary. One time I actually did a really crappy job and treated a high voltage cable like a regular cable and forgot about the shielding and 
just shot a 480 volt arc up to the ceiling of the of the roof and never made that mistake again and it almost fried uh customer uh motor so never did that again uh uh greasy monkey saying he hasn't got no uh no emails dude do you have does somebody else have his email maybe maybe jude sending it's going to the spam account um looking now mike pet post your email well maybe not well if you feel comfortable post your email and we'll try to have one of us send it to you so everyone knows I'm a novice at this computer stuff. I'm the worst one here. So I'm just like, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just spinning out. <laughs> for this to happen right now, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of messaging had to happen for this. <laughs> all right, Anthony, what else we got in the chat here? Let's see here. Uh, Sayer said, Ed is all good. I spent the night. Tricking people into fixing a 2004 Avenger, but it was a 2012. Hmm. Avengers. I haven't worked on one of those. Double, triple checking um, is. I think the part. Avenger wasn't that basically like the baby version of the modern Dart. All right, Mike. I should have sent that email to you. <clears throat> if it doesn't come in, then it's something on your end on the email account. <clears throat> Uh, speaking since we're talking Dodge right now, I know Ed was on with uh, Justin, and I caught wind of uh, apparently we're getting rid of the Challenger and the Charger, right, Ed? Was that on me? Yeah, that's the last. It's the last year. Last year. The last year. On the Charger, right, from Chrysler. Going that's right. Year. Same thing with the Camaro. Supposedly, twenty twenty four is the last year they're going to be making it. Again? Um, yep. No. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I, I, so I, I'm like the big Chevy guy here, probably right. I, I own a, a few of them, and okay. I, I'm not a fan of the Camaro whatsoever. The new ones, no, not really. No, no. I'm, I, I've the four, fourth gen is the last year that I consider them an actual Camaro. Everything the new ones, I just I've never liked them. Now, so, I and they're real hard to see. It. It's like driving an FJ Cruiser. Yeah, I would like to get a LS3 out of one of them to drop into a third gen Camaro. You know, growing up, everybody wanted a third gen Camaro. Well, I mean, everybody wanted a, a first gen, but uh, growing up, uh, everybody wanted. I, I always wanted a third gen, like a black and gold. You know, IROC Z. I mm -hmm. always wanted one with T tops. But so my, my after first, after driving one, I was like, "This is like the heaviest car on earth." Oh, it is. Heavy shit. My my first car was a, a 92. It was the 25th anniversary model. So it was white with the red stripes. And, and they, they are their boats, man. And then I ended up buying another 92 shortly after I had that one. And then they both ended up in the junkyard. All right. I got a good I got a good story about a 92 Camaro. So this guy I went to school with from like elementary school all the way to high school. Uh, he actually won like thirty thousand dollars on a scratch off ticket. And he was like thirteen years old. He was with his mom at the gas station, and and she was like, "Hey," he goes, "I want a lottery ticket." She's like, hey, "Which which one do you want?" He goes, "I want that one." And so he won like thirty thousand dollars on the scratch off ticket, and he bought hey. himself with his winnings a ninety two a black ninety two RS Camaro with uh, ragtop. And I bet you he still That's has it really today. Cool. You know, I saw him not too long ago, and I I should have asked him, but I hadn't seen That's him in probably fifteen years since. That's really cool, man. Yeah, I wish I had never gotten rid of mine, but it is what it is. No, I never had. I never had like a really cool car. If I if I had like a really cool car, it was in a really shit condition when I got it, and it stayed in that condition the whole time. <laughs> You know, I, I heard you guys say that's real cool. That's real cool. I think it was Jude who said that's real cool. Am I the only dummy that was sitting there going, dude, if you would have invested that $30,000 <laughs> in the S&P 500, you probably right. would have about uh, 150 to 250 k right now. All right. 
All right, Ed. I can't, I can't, I can't disclose any more information about his personal life, but let's just say that ain't the only time he's ever gotten lucky in life. <laughs> oh wow! Oh, he's one of those. Okay, yeah. good for him. Yeah, he's he's oh. he's got like the golden touch. Seventy-four GMC. He's doing hey, well. If he's got the golden touch. You should tell him to buy some Mexico, and maybe maybe that'll turn around. I ain't gonna buy it. Mexico. I'm I'm probably the only guy here that's a serious Ford guy then, huh? I don't know. I've had a bunch of Ford. I like my Fords. My coworkers give me a lot of crap about it. I feel confident in saying that Ken's probably the only guy in this group that's a serious Del Sol guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so growing up, I was a diehard Chevy fan. Like if it didn't have a bow tie on it, I scoffed at it, and it just it was trash to me. Like literally, I I could I could have something that was on jack stands nonstop, and somebody could have one that they've dropped fifty grand in, and it was like immaculate. And I'm like, that's a piece of trash compared to my car. That's how I was as a kid, um, 16, 17, 18 years old. But as I got older, I kind of grew to appreciate pretty much everything except Mopars. Yeah, I got a soft spot for old school Mopar. You know, Mo, you know, Mopar is French for thirty percent more. <laughs> uh, it needs it needs Mo parts, more parts, Mo parts. Yeah, my my uh, coworker just took on uh, his job. He's thinking of tearing down and doing his head gasket on his. Uh, I think it's a BMW. I think i five fifty or something. I'm not familiar with him by any means. And he stared at. Me. He's like, I think I overstepped my bounds. <laughs> Needs a head gasket and all kinds of other stuff. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan. He asked me, I'm like, can you help me? I'm like, I don't do Euro, man, unless it's Mercedes. Okay. Blow me up, Anthony. Uh, this right. is, I, I got a video coming out on this, guys. Look, right. check out my little, this is my mechanic tool cart here. There you go. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. Hung up right there. Ooh, look at that. When you pull the trigger, I got my, the drawers my funnel. Have. Look at my oh, funnels yeah. right there. I got my my shop towels, my kneeling pad, right there where's with your, the. Where's your Bluetooth speaker to listen to music? <laughs> it's coming! It's coming! Are you in your garage? I'm in my garage. Yeah, sorry, it's messy in here right now. No, no, no. I, I was just 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 checking because now that that's. Just, I'm getting I'm getting everything lined up. Look at look I got my all my uh, snap trees or what are, what do you call those, man? What are all those the things? Trees. Look. And I and I get and I get nothing but like actual Honda stuff to work on Hondas. So I have that. He's got about a thousand dollars worth of trim panel clips there. I probably do. Now, now you, now you're noticing how empty this looks, right? You're gonna tell me, God, Ed, that looks pretty dang empty. I'm gonna tell you why it looks empty here in a second. Hold on, let's see why. Okay, you ready? Raging Cajun on us. No, look, you, look. You're, you're, yeah, you're on us. I, I remember when he, when he was doing his transmission, man. I swear that's what I said. Don't get me wrong. I, I give him props. He's a truck driver, and he got he he, he knocked out his own trans. You know, he 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 hard his own trans, which is cool on the ground at a friend's house when a lot of his tools were in storage. I could you can take me off. But when he did his video, oh, dude, it was hilarious, man. I never saw so many tools around a truck ever in my life. <laughs> I will not show that. I will not show that in a video. I will not show that in a video. But it will it will be cleaned up here in just a bit. I'm almost done with the car, and the car shows. Uh, I mean, it feels. It sounds like like it should. It's happy. It, so I'm I've done the right thing. It's just it gets messy, bro. Like how I how am I supposed to keep the job going? The side job going. So I got my regular job. I then have my uh I then have my business that I run. And then on top of this, I got these side jobs that come in. You know, that's that's a lot of work. I 
I get messy. I, I want to hire a, I want to hire a kid that just goes around putting my stuff away. That's what I need. How do I get one of those? You have one. <laughs> you <done> the work. <laughs> pretty, pretty much. Man. Oh, you have one. I love that. I love that. I had girls, so they're not interested in like putting away my stuff. Doesn't matter. <laughs> you gotta do what you say. Oh, you want to bet? <laughs> they're girls. They're they're not gonna do what I say. I've got a, I, I've got a almost fifteen year old daughter. I know exactly what you're talking about, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you they're not going to do what you say, trust me. They're going to tell you what they're going to do and not do. I tried to like talk her into like coming outside and doing leaves one time and she's like she was out there for about 5 minutes and she's like there's too many mosquitoes. It's hot. I'm like, "All right, we'll see you later." <laughs> I can't yell at her cuz she was a little kid. So Exactly. Exactly. There she's a girl. You can't say nothing. You got to <sighs> So uh, Jay, Jay, you're gonna get Jay Who started in a second. He's gonna start dropping comments like crazy. No, let me tell you. <laughs> this is how you tell him. <laughs> uh, no, I'm all right. I'm done for tonight, guys. I'm gonna close up. Both stays like that. I get the screen tomorrow. Um, so tomorrow it's just that screen, air filter, cabin filter, and I am done. Uh, I take the seats out for the guy that's gonna come and detail it. That's pretty much it. Uh, Sayers asking Ed if you solved the shaking issue on that that Yoda. I, I, it's solved. It's absolutely solved. That's that's why it's taken such a long time. So, what did I what did I do to fix it? And I got to make a short video because a lot of people are asking me. Um, all right, it, it's going to sound kind of stupid, but I, I I got a little method to my madness. Um. The the main reason why it was shaking was the motor mounts were not installed correctly by whoever installed them. All right, so the it was the transmission motor mount, but it wasn't just that. The harmonic balancer, while it was not totally dead or gone, did have dry rot around the ring. Um, I took multiple pictures. I sent it to Theo here from TTS. He's not with us right now, guys, but Theo um, also wanted to jump in and give me a hand, and I told him check out the. Harmonic balancer said, "Yeah, that looks like dry rot, bro. I would, uh, I would kill that. Um, if you got the okay to replace it, just replace it." So I replaced it. Um, so I got the harmonic balancer. I've got the, I, I got the all four motor mounts done, and I and I did it really carefully. I dropped as I installed each one. I left everything nice and loose, and then when I let the engine come down, I let it come down nice and soft. And I didn't force any motor mounts in place. I let them, they should, they should fall right into place. If they don't fall right into place, you're doing something wrong. And, uh, I found out that the, the transmission motor mount was just kind of torqued in there. It was turned. I don't know how to explain it. Like a less than a 45 degree turn. It was pushing the engine. Put it this way. Everywhere I've seen videos, you could not stick a flat bar from the top to loosen the belt on the, on this engine. You have to come in from the bottom to loosen the belt. I'm sorry? Uh, greasy monkey. <laughs> oh, greasy hello, monkey. Hello. I, I have no idea how long you're here, man. I finally broke in. What's up, man? Glad so, you, man. How's everybody doing? Good, bro. Good. Glad to have you. So, so thank you, thank you. Uh, I was telling you guys, to get to the belt, most people, to change the belt on this thing, go from the bottom up. They don't go from the top down. Well, this thing is so torqued to the right, to the driver's side, um, that I could easily get a flat bar in there, un undo the uh, tension on the belt, and pull the belt off. It was easy money. Now that I have it set right, <laughs> I can't do it from the top anymore. I have to do it from the... You know, if I would have known I was going to change that screen, that would have been the time to do it. <laughs> um, but I have taken a lot of care. You, oh, oh, there's one other thing I have to change on this. The aux cord on the inside, the auxiliary radio cord uh, input is not working so i have to replace that um i replaced the headlights oil pan in here um uh what else did i replace the oh. i i cleaned the throttle body um uh, 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 uh. dang i've done so much here i don't remember guys sorry a lot of stuff um Grab the yeah, work I mean <laughs> It, it's side work, bro. I don't have that. I don't have, get a cool work order like you guys do that you know, make that all, all that money. 
I'm not going to make that much, but it's going to be you, worth it. How do you do? Here's a question people might, might watching want to know. I mean, I know a lot of people in the chat are techs and they know it, but a lot of people might be, uh, you know, DIYers. How, how, mm -hmm. how do you determine how much to charge someone for a job like that? Okay, well, when you're a DIYer, you got to first remember. Please do not say pro bono. So you got to first remember friends and family, right? Start with friends and family because, Jude, how many times do you get, hey, by the way, yeah. <laughs> hey, how are you? I know I haven't talked to you oh, in six wow. months. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, by the way, we haven't talked in a year, but do you mind, uh, <laughs> do oh, yeah. you mind helping me with this? Oh, right. The ways are, are are very common. Phone calls. I'm sure. Okay. I've had the phone calls. I, I think cast. Really cast if, if 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 uh, I'm gonna probably screw this all up, but but uh, cast. You just go ahead and say it. Nobody, nobody. What? How did you say it the other day when we were talking about? Oh, by the ways. Nobody ever calls to check and see how you're doing. They always have something they want. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's it. So. Those friends, family, people that know people, they usually get a cheaper charge. So I have a, I have a, a charge that I do per, per certain work, right? All your change. What is the dealer charge? 150 bucks, 75 bucks. I'll charge, you know, I, I'm looking for, I'm looking for 50 bucks and a case of beer with, uh, but they got to bring the parts, right? They bring the parts, give me 50 bucks and a case of beer. I'm cool. Um, this is a case of beer these days. I mean, like, shit, it might be cheaper to take it to the dealership. They might be giving cases of Bud Light now, just away. Now, now, granted, most of the time I've worked at shops or at dealers, mm -hmm. lube work mm -hmm. isn't your money maker. You know, you're not making money off the oil, oil change. You're making money off of what you sell from the oil change. Right. But, uh, uh, I think, and I think we're expensive, but I think we charge whatever the oil and filter costs plus thirty-seven fifty for an oil change. Yeah, we're oh, like, not. we're we're point three two, whatever our hourly rate is. I know it's going up, but we're doing you know, it progressively. We're we're point. What do you guys seven? What's included? What's included though? All right. So whenever you get an oil change done with us, we do the mm -hmm. obviously the oil and the filter. We check the air filter, check all the fluids, no matter what they mm -hmm. are. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I always peek through, look at the brakes, and then you do a, like a driveline check. You check to see if the springs are good. The sh you look at the shocks, the struts, the you know coil springs, leaf springs. You never know what's going on. Like I found many a problem, like serious problems, just at the oil change. I've seen a, I found a broken frame one time. I found broken leaf springs before. So it's all all types of stuff. And so oil what you want to do is you want opportunity to actually inspect a vehicle. Yeah. And so, but you gotta, I, you gotta make sure, you gotta make sure that you're, do oil you're doing I have it no though. Problem doing them. I, I don't want to do them at home. Like if people want me to do side work, they don't bring me an oil change. I'll, I will not do it. No. You check, but, uh, you check belts, you check hoses, you check, yeah. like you said, suspension components. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Any, anything that that has liquid going through it, you know, you you check all the line, make sure there's no leaks. But if I go, so say I pull the air filter out and the air filter is super duper dirty, well, then I'm pretty sure I'm going to sell air filter. I go pull the cabin air filter unless it's kind of a pain to get to. And then that way when I'm ordering parts, I'm ordering everything. Because kind of the way I look at it is if the engine's filter's blocked up, then probably the cabin air filter is blocked up as well or really dirty. So everything ends up working hand in hand. Yeah. So so there, there therein lies the difference, right? And the difference is... I automatically change. The, like if you're coming to me, you're, um, you're bringing the oil, the oil filter, the air filter, the cabin filter, wipers, or anything else that you need like that. And I will knock it all out and do it that way. I don't uh, – if, if they're bringing me an oil change, friends and family, people I know, I mean, they're going to spot me like 15 bucks or something, right? It's going to be yeah. something simple. But nobody's usually bringing me just the oil change. They're usually bringing me, hey, Ed, can you change the oil and – Here's ten different things that are messed up with the car. Can you figure it out? <laughs> yeah. No. And, but, no. and let me ask you a question. When you started doing the do-it-yourself stuff like this, how mm -hmm. did you put your name out there for people who are looking to get into it? 
Um, it, it, word of mouth really just starts traveling, right? So, like, my, you know, just my daughter will tell somebody, like, my dad's really good with cars. And, like, oh, really? Cool. Um, it, it, and it just starts floating out there. My mom will start telling people, oh, you need your car fixed. Like, I had a lady come here that my mom brought. And um, the lady was on welfare and she was beat up and, and, you know, in a really bad situation, right? But her car was like really in trouble. She brought it to me. I fixed it all for free. I didn't charge a thing just for the parts. She just, and she bought them all at O'Reilly's. And now, now she tells everybody, you should go to Ed. Like, but I told her, don't tell people I do it for free. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but, that's a bad but, uh, precedent to set. Yeah, that's a bad precedent to set. But, you know, she'll give them my number, and when they call me, I'll say, hey, I charge this much. This is what I do. Now, you guys do a much more thorough uh, investigation, right? You guys are able to lift it, look underneath. I don't do that. I I have a set amount of things that I'm going to do. i obviously going to check basic things like tire pressure. I can check, uh, you know, I can get on the tire and, and, and try to push it left, right, up, down to see if there's any tire rod or any play or anything like that. I could do basics like that. But usually I have like a mission to accomplish like this Toyota where I have a laundry list of things to fix. Um, and then people just start talking about like, Hey, this guy's really good. Like I had somebody, you know, tell me, Oh, uh, they wanted to bring me a car because they were told that uh, their car only had two motor mounts and they wanted them replaced. And I'm like, your car does not have two motor mounts. <laughs> Your car has more than two motor mounts, man. What are you talking about? Um, and I and I'm nice enough to pull up the drawing, text them the drawing, and they see it and they're like, "Oh crap, this guy knows what he's talking about." Like, I really want him to work on my car. Other people have brought me their car and then say they didn't, you know, that I I should be a little more professional. Like, I should have more of a shop type thing, right? So they'll take their car to a shop and sometimes they'll run into a really bad shop like this Toyota did and they'll come back to me and then they'll stick with only me. They'll be like, I don't care what you got to do. If I got to wait till the summer for you to do this job and my car can make it, I'll have you do it. So it, you know, I, I am by no means saying I'm at the professional level here. This is just side work. Now, when I was, again, when I was uh, a few years ago, I was trying to, support my family just doing a mobile thing and it just became hard having to not having a shop to work at all the time <sighs> yeah anyways I, I still do a lot of side work like that but i try to do stuff at shops now and then i just have where i work at, at the shop now but um the way i was getting work was i i i don't, I don't remember how i got the initial customer but it was a lot of word of mouth dude and this guy had a uh he was part of a a Facebook page called Southern California Off-Road Recovery. And mm -hmm. it's kind of like uh, if you break down or if you, if you get stuck somewhere, you know, you're trying to get people to come help you for free. And I always work for free, but a lot of these guys had diesels. And uh, a few of these guys that were on it, once, once it started spreading on that page, when I had people, let me see, from where I live, I had one guy tow his truck. Uh I'm going to say it's a good 120 miles. Another guy about 70 miles. I mean, people were, it blew my mind how far they were coming from just because they were getting recommendations on this Facebook page. Yeah, that, that, that's how easy it is to get your name out. If you're really good at working in cars and you're a young guy and you're trying to make extra cash, it is not hard to get your, your, your word out there, you know, word of mouth to start working for you. But it's here's the trick. Right? Mark, Mark knows that site. Yes. Mark Mark knows that Mark <laughs> knows that Southern California Off Road Recovery. Yeah, they are a bunch of they are a bunch of cool dudes, man. Then when when I saw that, then I was like, oh, I wonder how this would work. Now, granted, so I, I'm dead better of you know I could be pretty much anywhere people go, and can get stuck within an hour. But uh, I would see these uh, other pages on Facebook like uh, Power Stroke Tech Help or six six zero six four distress or stuff like that and uh i would just pop my head in and give advice and then some once in a while hey where you at i'm like oh i'm in southern california they're like oh damn i'm in indiana they go where are you at i'm in southern california dude I'm, I'm not that far i'm in southern california too and, and i would get get uh customers like that too yeah 
Yeah, Country Mile Garage has got a great point right there. Drop business cards and stuff like that. Now, <laughs> listen, I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I have my uh, flyers at, at a, a couple of parts stores out here that they hand them out. I am going to tell you, if you're a DIYer, be careful with that because you have to be careful with the amount of work that you get. You may not be able to handle it and you don't want to be stuck in a situation where you have people coming and then they're mad at you because you, you can't do it. I, uh, hold on. Yeah, like Dave says, I don't do side work anymore for cash. Uh, help out friends and family. That was the next one I was going to go to. Yeah, I don't, I don't do side work anymore because I have the yeah. shop. But what I, I will do is I have like when Dave. What's that? I'll do side work for some family, but not friends. Depends on who you are and what the. Well, my is. so my my parents they you know obviously they get their shit worked on for free. I mean, my grandma yeah. gets her stuff worked on for free. Well, so I don't have a grandmother; she's dead. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mine are too. Uh, otherwise, her hers would probably get worked on for free too. But no, my parents, I work on their stuff for free. But like everybody else, they pay. My little brother, I'll work on his stuff. He yeah. has to buy the parts. It's the only thing he has to do. But I'll work on his. But I got the shop. I'm not gonna go drag my shit out. And every once in a while, we'll go on remote and we'll go do a remote job. But that's because it pays so well. Like we pulled a fuel tank out of a. RV and the reason why I went to help Robert with this because it paid so well. I'm like, oh darn, let me take your money. You know, oh, that's right. So, so guys, so some some people ask, why don't you do side work? Like, um, you know, Quick Wrench says, you know, it's a good statement. I don't do side work anymore. You know, he, he doesn't mind and helping ask, out people. I mean, so if you're work, <laughs> so you end up working all the time when you do side work because you, you never tell anybody no. Stuff. This is you true. Never tell anybody no. And Dave's going to agree with me 100% on this, is you'll always be stuck doing side work. It's like five nights a week you're doing side work, and then you have two nights off, and then you get bombarded with everything else. You never have any free time when you do side work. Uh, I am not going to disagree with that for years. Because one of the things I'm looking at doing, so my dad's got an 85 Jeep Wrangler, and he's got a built 383 stroker and a, a transmission to go with it that he's redoing. And it's getting to the point now where it's time to do body work and he's been holding off. And I know why he's been holding off because I've been in the class and that's what I do uh, part time after class now. And one of the things that we're looking at getting is kind of like a mobile paint booth. So basically what it is, is it's like the car canopies that you can buy at Tractor Supply and Harbor Freight and stuff. And it's got screens built into it to where you hook like an exhaust fan up to it with a filter system. And it filters all the paint out. So you're still within like regulations and stuff like that. Well, I told him when it comes time to do the body work on the Jeep, buy all that stuff to include the tent for me and I'll redo. We'll, we'll do all of it at your house. Then one of the boys that I coach in baseball, his parents are a very, very predominant business oriented family. It's, it's one of the names that, when you say their last name, everybody knows who you're talking about in this area. And <clears throat> I was asking her because she they have a bunch of like plots of land all over the place. I was like, is there some place that when I do this, I could put it up there, give you a couple whatever hundred bucks or do work for you, whatever it may be for the space to put it up on. And she was like, absolutely. When it comes time, you let us know and we'll talk about it. So that's one of the things that I'll be looking at doing in the spring of next year. Yeah, so. The JWC Tech, that's I. So pre 2020, that's what I was. I did a lot of. That's what my side business consisted of: was buying and selling vehicles. But man, yeah. life happened. That, I got out of it. So. That's pretty cool, though. That's pretty cool. I I've never done that. I've always been scared to do it because. Uh, well, no. Here's the deal. <laughs> This is so. I even I made this little short one time. Robert and I we bought a truck and we were getting ready to sell it. And I just told Robert, I go, when do you, when do you make money on these buys? And he's like, and he knew where I was going with it. And he goes, when you buy it, you, that's where you make all your money is when you buy it. You got to be able to buy it right, but you don't make it when you sell it. And you just got to know what what it needs. You got to be able to look at it and kind of like 
run through it real quick and go, okay, it needs this, 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 and this. And then you need to get rid of it right away. Like, don't let that thing grow grow grass underneath it. Like, it needs to be there and be gone. So if you do car flips, like what I always plan on is I have like a two-month plan. I'm going to get that thing fixed in the first month and get it sold in the second month. That's my two-month plan. So I'm doing six a year. But the longer it sits, the worse it gets. Well, or you, what happens is you end up with like 24 of them like I did. So, <laughs> you know. And you have a car lot. It, no, it was, but they, they didn't run. Oh, ouch. <laughs> but there were, so it was, it was a little bit different deal. I don't really want to get into it because it was, I had like a bunch of classic stuff, like old, like internationals and stuff like that. And a bunch of like old hot rods and a bunch of old trucks. And so I just, I had to sell them though. I was, I had to, well, I had to get rid of it because I thought I was dying at the time. So, <laughs> oh, geez. That's Is that how you got that blazer that you have. The hunt blazer? Yeah. No, I bought that uh, years ago from a homeless guy. No. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Seriously. Hand to God. I, I bought it from a homeless guy. Because they had it, he was driving it and he blew up the rear end. He was in a grocery store parking lot. And so Travis's dad is basically a homeless person too. And he's like, Hey, it's a good vehicle. I don't want to see it go to waste. But no, I actually sold it. I sold the hunting blazer in July, August, something like that. But I still get to work on it. Can I can I just tell you that this thing is amazing? I love this thing. Dude, you gotta tell you gotta tell our buddy this thing's great. I love it. I use it. Die there. What was that? I'm sorry. Jude's Jude's buddy. Jude's guy. You, you just caught Jude's eye there, though. It's the power yeah. Look at that. Green. Yeah. Look at that. Oh man, this this yeah. thing has been. Is that yeah, the wow, that same one, same color? One over here? I love it, man. I love it. I, look, I love my gear wrench one too, but the gear wrench does something kind of interesting. At, you set it, and then it takes like, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds to reset back to zero. Or you have to hit this one here. You could just hit the button. It resets back to zero and go. Hit the button, go back to zero and go. And oh, oh, oh man, this thing helped me with all the motor mounts. I love it, man. This thing's yeah, great. Wrench. Gear wrench does something else. It's half the price. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's like a no. Price. <laughs> a, a, uh, yeah, Mike, you're probably right, Cass. Mike, Mike that was actually uh, it got that used off of snap on on a from a from a repo, I think. So he he, he got it. He got it for like right. less than gear wrench money. Oh, oh yes, I did. Oh, yes, I did. And I really need some more of those deals. So keep an eye out yeah. for me, Jude. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that I was, did not, that, unfortunately. That was, the, that was the deal of a century right there, man. Bro, I, I am. Whew, man, that, I, I want more of those. That's all I could tell you is how do I get more of those? <laughs> that was great. You can take me off the main screen there, uh, uh, Anthony. 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 Um, I've been getting way too many nicknames this week. Yeah, he's getting his uh, cherry pop on, on, on all this. How do we send the link? How do I cite him? It's it started about quarter to five, and I think we ended up going live <laughs> like 45 minutes later. But it's all right. That's that's how you learn, man. If you have to do that's how you learn. Time. All right, fellas, I'm going to cut I out lost here. more hair, I think. Right, Ken, Take a Ken, shower Ken. and go to bed. Take care, Ken. Have a great one, brother. Thanks for showing up. We truly appreciate you. Yeah, everybody on the panel, have a good night. Everybody in the chat, y'all have a good night. And definitely check out all of our personal channels. And uh, obviously, you're here because you're subscribed to our channel, Text Talking Shop. But share it. Share it out for with all your friends. Eek, make, sure, you, make sure you hit up uh, Harley Davidson. They're having a good sale on, yeah. on rent. <laughs> <laughs> I heard they're getting a good deal on salt blades. That's okay. <laughs> Have a good night, Ken. Oh, all right. So uh, I got a couple I want to address. I can't. I can't answer the chat with my computer somehow. All right. So Dave has a. He said something here. What did he say? Uh, what is that? He said that he has a daughter that cooked a cylinder head on a boy. Yeah, they're not fun to do. 
You know the hardest part. You know the hardest job on that whole vehicle is changing out the heater hose on it, though. Uh, yeah. Oh, Sayer, I, head. Damn. Yeah. Sayer, I'd like to say that I'd like to get triple my money all the time, but sometimes it doesn't happen. It's like I told Robert uh, back when we were flipping cars. If we can make twenty percent on our money, there's no investment out there that we can invest in that's making twenty percent. So. Uh, that's the I'm truth making, if I'm making 20% then I'm doing pretty well you know you always want to go and make more money but sometimes you just run into a real turd so, um, I live in the rest belt there's a lot of those well they so they Robert's didn't... brother Robert's brother lives in Ohio and so what I was trying to do is I was trying to ship trucks to him to sell up there but he's not trustworthy enough to do it so we're just kind of like <laughs> We'll put the kibosh on that because I'm like, you know, he would probably sell them, but would he pay us for them? I don't know. Right. But. Well, then you send a nice truck up here, and then in a couple of years, it's not that nice anymore anyway. Well, yeah, but so what was going on is uh, they were they were selling Texas trucks for probably 40% over what the value was here up there because they weren't rusty. So they have 100,000 miles on them, but people were eating them up because they were affordable. They're still paying way over price. So, wow. now, like now, but now, vehicles but, are yeah, now everything's so expensive. You know, you know you'd be amazed at $2,500. I, I, I sorry, Ed's speaker is killing me here. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I mean, <laughs> But you know, twenty five hundred dollars used to buy like a pretty decent vehicle you could like turn around and flip. Now twenty five hundred dollars buys you like a car maybe with tires on it. You know, like you don't know what pile of shit you're buying for twenty five hundred bucks. So I, I saw right. I saw Rust once. You know, I, I was uh, being here in Southern California. I was working about about two miles at a dealership, two miles from Disneyland. I felt bad, man, because all all over the windows it said Disneyland. Here we come! It was like an Ohio truck or something. An Ohio ex- excursion from Ohio, <laughs> but but yeah, I, I saw I saw some rust on that thing once. <laughs> yeah, oh and, yeah, dude, we 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 cannot actually talk about rust be, compared to a guy like Mike right here. No, that, that's why I'm joking, man. Because yeah, no, nah, of course we've all no. seen rust. Nah, that, that's my my joke I always tell because I don't. See I do not need that. I do not need that 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 venom heat thing to loosen. Yeah, up. that's why I, t- I used to say to Theo, but Theo said he didn't own a torch. But I used to say like I'd never live in a in a place where the first tool I reach for on any repair is the torch. Yeah, you, you're just going. <laughs> go. Just eat that shit up. We're not messing around. Yeah, can't be tight if it's a liquid. BS small engines is back. Uh, you passed that all his foot tests with hundreds. Uh, I'm not sure what he was taking. Dave, it's possible on that one. Uh, I've done one, but it's been a while. They're not fun. I'll tell you that. Uh, the only thing is... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I was just answering this question. Um, you got a good machine shop? You can take it and get it pressure checked. That would be what I would do. Yeah, to, to check the head? Yeah. Yeah. Torch. <laughs> That's what Theo goes. I don't need a torch. <laughs> I do, and I'm not that far north of you, Theo. You're in my uh, company's uh, home home state, man, Michigan. Ah, yeah, where uh, my company's out of Lavonia. Out of Lavonia, you said? Yep. Yeah, it's uh, about 45 minutes from me. Uh, we get guys from uh from that area like it's nice out here. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> not really. I, I, I went out that way, way once. Go from California to Michigan. Yeah, yeah, so you're, you're, culture shock. Siri, so you'll see you'll see a that video that, that I'm putting out for Text Talking Shop here in the next few days uh, on the TTS you, this channel, Text Talking Shop. But as far as Power Stroke Jude, I mean, <laughs> who knows, man? He's semi-retired. <laughs> Power Stroke Jude semi-retired. Maybe you should just do shorts then, Jude. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that, that, that's what I'm leaning towards. Ed knows I, I love doing shorts. 
Yeah, so the only thing that sucks, quick wrench on that one, is taking that chunk out on the the differential because you know the differential goes through the pan on that one, so it's kind of a bitch. What? Oh, quicker uh, says he he's in Michigan too, I think, isn't he? Yeah, I think Dave is in Michigan. I think he's in Michigan. I might as well just move to Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> I can get used. I can get used to the cold. I think. Yeah, I've been here all my says, life, and I can't. Says somebody that's never had to deal with it. Look, I will tell you what the I will tell you what the temperature is going to be this week here for me. I'm cold at uh, 74, 83, 78, 85, 73, 81, 81, 82, 82. I'm not moving ever. Yeah, it's going to be about 85 on Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, Thursday. Here. I mean, it'll be a, it'll be in the hundreds next month. But I, man, I'll we are. You, I, I love. We're hunting. steady fifties this week. I could do that. Fifties. It freaking snowed here like like the, this past week. <laughs> I'm sick of I'm sick of this weather. Where are you at? Chicago. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. That, that's it. Oh, I'm not sorry. Yeah, we're, we're picking up a little bit. JWC Tech, Theo. Uh, the first thing I always look at because I mainly only sell uh, trucks and SUVs because that's kind of what's the hottest thing around here. If I do buy and sell, but the first thing I look at is the receipt. Yeah. To see how worn out it is. Yeah, yes, there. That is actually my life: mechanics, carpentry, plumbing, machining, and cooking. Ed, are are you hanging out with Ken's dog? Ken's dog? Why? I use your phone. Oh, sorry. I'm I'm washing my hands, man. I'm trying to get all the oil off of it. I should have muted. You're using the squeeze bottle of orange of of that orange soap, huh? Go Joe, Joe go, yeah, Joe yeah. go, go Joe. I heard, you squeeze, I, heard, I heard you squeezing it out right now. <laughs> right, Ed, Ed, Ed. So where, yes, do you, where do you get your hand soap from? Um, dude, uh, you, all right. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to let the secret out. Uh, two, two, three houses from me. I've got a pro diesel mechanic. That, that when I say diesel, he works on semis. He gives me. Buckets of that Gojo stuff. I'm good. All right. Well, I wasn't going to send you anything. I was going to recommend something. The next oh. time you, you, you use, you go to buy hand soap, go buy something called TKO from Zep. You can get it at Advanced, I think. I think Advanced sells it now. Or Is it blue? It. Is it blue cast? No, it's like green, but I don't know. I see colors different than a lot of people. So what we got now is we got something from Kimball Midwest. I forgot the name of it right now off the top of my head. It is the best hand cleaner that we have ever had in the four years I've been there. Theo yeah, said I, that was Ed's bottle of nut wax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, they. I, it, I don't. Looked, I don't like. I don't like beautiful. Gojo. I don't like Joe's. I don't like Lava. None of that shit works for me. Lava's no, never like either. Coat. Lava's crap. No, need, no lava soap. No ladies' hands. Don't get that dirty. Yeah. No, no. Well, my favorite, my favorite movie that had lava in it was whenever uh, in Pulp Fiction. Whenever he was washing after they killed Marvin, and he was washing his hands. He goes, "Ain't got no lava." <laughs> 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 uh, oh, we're going there then. I couldn't say that. <laughs> so, Zep, well, I think we got the same stuff as Anthony, probably. I know we get ours through Kimball Midwest. It's just, I it, it think it's like PB plus or PB. Like, it, it's, it's the best stuff we've had. I'm like, oh, holy crap. I'm the only guy in the shop that doesn't wear B mittens. Everyone else gloves up and all. Like, What's wrong with you guys? <laughs> um, I wear them. I just personally don't. My brother, me and him, got in an argument watching the bait, the basketball game. He's like, "You making fun of him?" I'm like, "No, but you're holding like sharp metal and glass and stuff. I don't need this every minute of my day. I don't like wearing them because I I feel I lose dexterity in my hands when I'm wearing them. That's just me." Okay, so I have a I have a story I want to run by you guys. Um, if my phone I'm sorry, it's at 1%, even though I got it on a chart. 
somebody took a, somebody I know that wanted me to work on their car. I couldn't get to it, took their car to the dealership. And when they towed it, it, it must have spilled the contents. Well, when it got to the shop, uh, the person called me and said they were pretty embarrassed because they had old coffee, old shakes and stuff that they never drank, that they just let sit in the thing. And when it towed, it spilled all into the cap, stunk up the car like nobody's business. I told them I in that vehicle. I told them I told them you go back to that shop if they did a good job on your car and you tip each one of those people that touched your car at least twenty five bucks. And you tell them you apologize. And they're like, dang it, for real? I'm like, absolutely, bro. I would have I would have turned your car around and been like, you get a detail before you bring it to me. So have you guys seen stuff like that? Does that happen to you guys? Oh yeah. yeah. It sucks. I, I yeah, charge them have to clean someone's vehicle. I've I got vehicles that just are just, there's this customer we have right now. He's a pilot. And when he comes in, you know, he's clean shaven. Looks like he's got clean clothes. Uh, just looks like a normal dude. Like, but when you get in his car, oh my goodness, I would you wouldn't believe that he just got out of that car. He he, he drives a, a a Prius. I'm like, oh, dude, man. Yo, he, he always blames his his yeah, kids close. and his wife. And I said, dude, last time I even told him, I said, last time I'm I'm pretty cool with him. I said, last time last time you said that, man, mumble. But now you bring your wife's car in, and she's always got the kids, and her car doesn't smell like that. I'm like, come on, dude. I'm going to wash oh, your car. Man. I mean, like, I've you see it every once in a while, like people who's they got a lot of kids, and they have food and shit all in the car, and, and it sucks. Or they spill, like, a milkshake on the back seat, and they never clean it up or something like that. But I've got That's some horror worst, stories. No. I've got some. I don't, I, don't even, I don't even know if I should tell them on the damn – Live stream, but they're bad. Have you ever seen roaches in a car? I've seen roaches. I've seen rats and mice. Well, yeah, I've seen all right sorts here. of nasty rats around here are a normal thing. You get them in the car all the time. Usually in the summertime, they're in the blower motor because you can smell them. But, uh, oh, yeah. You know how many chewed up cabin air filters I've had to fetch out? They get spun to death. You know, you find had- them and they're, they're stuck in the wheel like, ah! <laughs> You're right. Yeah, I found a few few cats like in ben, in the oh, band clutch. Squirrel. But no, I've got oh, yeah. like I've had people I don't even want to talk about it. It's gross. I, like their I, cars are so nasty. I had a car I worked on. I had to pull the dashboard on this thing and the car was floor to ceiling junk from the front seat or from the back of the vehicle. All the way to and including the passenger side front seat. The only available space was the driver's spot. And I had to pull the dash. I told them, no, you take the car and clean it out and then you bring it back. Because to do that particular dash job, you had to pull the front seats out. So I was like, clear out the back, uh, up to the back seat at least so I can pull these seats. That was a rough one. Oh, yeah. I mean, you find. I was looking at Sayers' comments. I'm like, I found all kinds of stuff on cars. Stuff you don't even want to talk about. <laughs> that's why I won't. That's why I don't like working on RVs, you know, because they'll go like, you have to go lift up the bed in the back to, to get to one of the access panels. I ain't touching that. Mm-mm. I think Justin Dell did a, a video where he said he was lifting a cab on a, on a truck. So when he was dropping everything out of the the glove box, you know, he's opened the glove box so he can drop it out so he can get the the evap box bolts. He found the I don't know what you call it. I'm trying to think of a proper term a way to say it. <laughs> but he found he found the uh drug dealers style wad of cash, uh crap ton of weed and he found I think he said it was a revolver oh. or something. I remember when he did that video. And yeah. He said he just he just yeah. took it out and took it to his service manager and put it in his office and said, "Hey, this I got this has to come out because I got to lift the, lift the cab, but I don't want to just leave this in the truck." So, yeah, I remember that video very specifically. I I used to work in the hood in Detroit. That was pretty common, actually. Wow. 
put oh, in. I, I hate RV. working on RVs, man. Having to take pa paper and plastic everything. You know, if you're doing engine work, because you have to work out of the doghouse. Oh, when I was at the truck center, yeah. a lot of RVs. I used to hate that working in your socks. I, I've never worked on an RV, so um, I have no idea what I'd be getting into if I ever had to work on one. You don't want to. Ah, uh, because I always get to work on them in the middle of summer. You sweat your balls off inside of those things. Because you can't run it. You can't turn on the AC if you're working on the engine. Right. Or you, or you so can't. it sounds like just a miserable crap show. Oh, man. It Pretty sucks. much. Like when a 100 degree air is blowing in under the car over the, you know, up from the <laughs> bottom of the engine, you're like, ah, oh, that feels great, you know? Yeah. Oh, you got to take okay. a fan in there. You know, like they're definitely getting their RVs going to smell like sweaty asshole whenever it comes back, you know, to them because my, <laughs> my big ass is <laughs> sweating the whole time. <laughs> No, I I don't like working on RVs. I mean, I don't I don't hate it, but it it definitely has a different charge. Now, my favorite RVs to work on are ones that are semi-based RVs, where it's like a semi truck in the front. It's not like a pusher. You know, they actually have like a it's like a, a Kenworth or Peterbilt or whatever yeah. like truck, and then the box like is built vision. onto that because then it's you're able to get parts for it. You're able to work on them. They're my favorite RVs. My least favorite RVs. Or pushers. I don't like working on pushers. They're such a pain in the ass to work on. But well, Brady, right. you really cut an RV apart in 100 degree weather. No, and that's the fun of Michigan too. Nice and cold in the winter, but it gets hot as hell in the summer. Oh no! When when we when I first started at my job, uh, the guys that were, were from Michigan came up. It was 65. It was 8 a.m. There's no humidity. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. There's definitely humidity here. Michigan said <laughs> the humidity is what kills us. And it's true. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, <laughs> when you want to go to lunch, you might want to bring a second pair of pants to, to swap out. <laughs> I have to say, though, the cold, the cold is a blessing, even though we hate it. I hate it, but it's a blessing. You know why? Because in the cold, you can't smell dirty. Everything, all the smells go away. It's really hard to smell stinky in a in a in a freezing cold environment. So bring, uh, bring summer to back. Iowa. Wait, wait, what was that? You ever been to Iowa? <laughs> <laughs> I have been. I I, I, I was there sure, doing. Pretty, um, pretty sure you can smell some stink there. <laughs> no, well, I, I don't know about all that, but I. I was there at Iowa State doing a, a big installation for them, but I'm going to tell you, I, I I do like the I do like the cold. It makes all the it makes a lot of the stinkiness go away. I I uh, well, you, I'll you take the cold any time. I can tell you, Ed, if you've ever lived in a farm town, you know you can have stinking cold in the same town. Oh, <laughs> I I live in a city, right? So. So it usually smells like bums that piss themselves around here, right? That's usually that's the that's the everyday right. smell. Ooh, right. uh, I've right. been there, Detroit, uh, not I'll Chicago, but I get it. Being, being, being I don't live in the country now. You you guys all really have it made because I mean it, it gets like in the winter it'll be forty five degrees during the day out here, and in the summer it can be like ninety five, a hundred. I mean it's miserable in southern california this weather uh, boy i'll tell you we got an average of about 74 throughout yeah. the year Man. it's terrible you poor thing <laughs> you know this morning i, I opened up the door and i had two minutes of sunshine it's 105 and then, about two minutes of sunshine you said <laughs> no i said i said i opened up the door i had 12 inches of sunshine oh, 12 inches is <laughs> <laughs> I had somebody do that. that. Somebody, somebody sent me one of those when we had the big snowstorm a couple years back, and I, I like texted one of my buddies a picture of how deep the snow was at our house, and then he texted me a picture of it. You know, he had twelve inches of sunshine. I'm like, God, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta worry about none of that. Where Anthony's at, he gets a little bit. So, cold. so guys. Um, when I say cold, I mean five. <laughs> Are you guys in north, northern or southern end of California? I'm in the northern part of the state. 
Uh, okay. You're Central California. No, I'm a, no, I'm in the northern part. Uh, don't make this debate. <laughs> I've many a time in my life. You're you're northern central. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm up here and you say that it's not going to be proper language. <laughs> no, we'll consider. I, I'm in the northern part of the state. The even northern part is, the, you know, where that that, that 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 guy we don't need in office anymore is. <laughs> Joey Preciado, what did he do? He he's hiding. I talked to Joey yesterday. Oh, how's he doing? Well, you know, I can't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Jude, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what the inside joke is on that. Uh, I haven't talked to Joey in a while. Hey Ed, you were gonna say something right now. I, the- I was. What did you guys think of my long video there where I, it was like midnight with Ed uh, voice? I couldn't talk loud. I had everybody in my house was asleep, and I really needed to get the video done. So I apologize for those that thought Ed was high, but <laughs> I just needed to get the video out. What would you guys think? What was your thoughts? Ed, after midnight. <laughs> I thought you did a good job, Ed. No. Yeah, I didn't think it was yeah, that bad. Still- Actually, it was quiet, but not super quiet. It was, uh, you weren't as quiet as you think you were, Ed. Oh, okay, good. So what did you guys do? Doing your, 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 you don't realize this, but you, you right now on the live stream, you have mm-hmm. your live stream voice. And on your videos, you have your video voice. On your live stream, you're laughing, mm-hmm. you're talking, you're, and on your videos, it's, hey, everybody, it's Ed the old tech guy. And today we're going to go through this Honda Odyssey. And, I mean, it, it's a different – you use a totally different voice videos compared to live streams, man. Later, Theo. Good night, Theo. Later, Theo. Good night, Theo. Um, I, I get that. It's, it's, it's a flow thing. It's almost like I got to put myself in a specific mindset to speak – uh, what but, I'm going to talk about, man. I, I like I like your content, man. I, I've told you, I, I watch just... a lot of your content because I like the content, but also because I like to get ideas from you on how to make my, even though I don't edit very well, how to make my my videos better. Any editing you've ever seen me do in any of my videos, which isn't much, um, have been ideas I've I've pretty much got from Ed or maybe told Emils. He used to give me a few ideas, but. Uh, Justin Dow gave me a couple, but Ed and I, we spent hours talking, mm-hmm. talking, and, and we was, he's giving me so much advice that I remember he made a comment once saying, man, sometimes I feel like I'm give, giving you advice just so you not to take it, which is probably what it seems like, because he might give me 10, 10 ideas or 20 ideas, and I, I use one, but it's not because I don't like the other 19. It's because I suck so bad at editing. I picked the one that I thought was going to be the easiest to do, and I and I roll with it. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we've talked about like what our editing processes are and stuff before too like hey so my advice to you is this i had a ex-girlfriend that i was with and she went into radio now she had a radio voice and there's a distinction between that when you talk on air and when you talk off air and that's kind of where you're at and when you do it you have your own voice. It sounds very pronounced, very, very professional, very normal. And then you, you can do it different. It's a, it's a tonal thing. You need to learn how to separate it. And I know a lot of people that do radio broadcasts in my area, and they all have their regular voice and then their on-air voice. That's kind of where, where you're at, in my opinion. You guys want to hear a nightmare? Check this out. That that video that I made, I was about to hit print, basically, and say, good, ready to upload. It was the middle of the night. I was tired. And right when I was about to hit print, the program crashed. The editing program crashed. Oh. And I was like, oh, no. So I opened it back up. All my editing was okay. Everything was there, but it asked me a question. Would you like to keep the changes made? And I was like, well, no, just keep it the way it was. 
I don't know why I was thinking that. I don't know what happened in my mind. I clicked no. It reverted all my editing back to like the first 10 minutes of the editing that I did. And I couldn't get it back. I couldn't get it back. I was about to lose my mind. I had about three hours of editing into that video. And I was like, screw it. I'm going to put this video together and it's going to be done. And I am done. <laughs> um, and I re-edited it. But the cool thing was I had already downloaded all the images and everything. And I had already an idea of how I wanted it edited. So it went a lot faster. So that that video only took me probably about four to five hours to edit. Hey, JWC Tech nailed it, dude. He, he nailed it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read his comment. He says, you sound real during live streams. But on video, sometimes it seems like you're uh, a kindergartner teacher. So he's a no offense. He likes your videos, but the, but yeah, he's, you just sound like you're. I mean, like beyond layman's terms, you know what I mean? Like like talking real, real, real. Like hey, I, I don't know. That, he he kind of nailed it, man. I I've been told that before. I've been told that before, and I don't know. I don't know what it is. I'm not trying to be insulting in any way, shape, or form. I just like. For myself, I like things explained really easy. No problem. Right? Like I want, like explain it to me the simplest way. And so I do that for other people thinking that I'm, you know, I'm trying to help. And some people like it. Some people don't. Some people get really annoyed. Like, dude, you're talking to me like I'm dumb. I'm like, I'm not. I'm talking to you the way I want to be talked to when I want to learn something. Like break it down to the lowest level so that I get the real basics. And, uh, you know, I, I get that. I get what he's saying. Um, add a little bit of entertaining in there, and then you just try to, you know, you come off a certain way. I've right. tried to change that, but haven't been able to get it successfully. All right. So that's been the last thing I say, and then I'm going to have to shut it down on my end. But Yeah, same here. So the way I always told people in football, whenever I'd go to coach football, is you're not like going to like how I do stuff. I'm in charge. If, we, if that's not going to work, then we're not going to work. So be, just know this going in. I'm an asshole. You're just going to get used to it. <laughs> and it worked out. And so, because I'm, that's just the way, if I'm going to be a part of it, that's, I'm going to be in charge. And that's how I always was with football. So now at work, I'm a little more forgiving, but not much. But as long as you maintain the standards, I mean, as long as standards maintain, we're good. Well, who is J Z? Is he a YouTuber? Go to the last comment. It's kind of like. Uh, like oh, oh, that uh, like Jay Z dumbing it down for the masses. He's talking about the rapper. Oh. Yeah, Jay Z was a rapper. Oh, if it's I'm I'm I don't follow too much hip hop or rapper. I don't either, man. I'm more into that. Oh, yeah, no. Maybe. I like my social distortion. That's right. <laughs> no, I bought it. I bought it. I bought a guitar amp over the weekend. Finally got it. Oh. All right. Oh, you, it you, out. Hey, it's mm -hmm. good to talk to yeah. all you guys. I'm going to run off with chaos. Well, not with chaos, but you know what I mean. Yeah. It's good to see <laughs> everybody. I, I'll make my exit now, too. Have subscribe, a good night. Subscribe to the Tech Talking Shop and whatever else we do. And uh, and Brandon, go find Brandon. Brandon's close to 2K. Got to help him out. Let's oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Man, that's right. Like, help him out. And don't forget to hit the like button. Please. Yeah. Yep. All right. Later, See y'all later. All right. Take care, Cass. Have a good one. Good night, Mike. Take care, bro. Later, Mike. Uh, so, so Sarah hits it right on the nose. I have to. I have to deal with employees, different departments, groups, customers, and I have to explain everything to them and. I have to explain really that, that complex, that complex network stuff. Yeah, think about it. He, he hit it right on the head. I, I, I couldn't have explained it better. It, I, I do have to explain stuff, and I have to make it really simple for everybody. And I have to explain difficult things, right? Like, yeah. imagine you guys explain the tra how a transmission yeah. works to, to people. Exactly what he's saying right here, because I've been having to deal with that a lot more lately. Hey guys, that's right. Two, two hours. It's a little minutes. aggravating when I go into work and oh, the tool don't work. It's broken. I'm like, it wasn't broken when I left on Friday. 
Hey, 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 but you got to remember, think, think, think about that in this regard. Tool don't work, work, it's broken. All right, now you're saying it wasn't broken when I left on Friday. Think about this in a as a tech who just worked on a car and a customer's telling you, oh, this uh, didn't break. It wasn't broken when I brought it in. You know, things break, dude. I mean, just because it wasn't broke on Friday doesn't mean it wasn't. Yeah, no, break. no, no. Uh, we, we addressed it today and it turned into, okay, that's where we just went, grabbed a whole new thing. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to show everyone how to properly do pipe threading for what we're doing. No one else is allowed to touch it unless I'm doing it and showing them. That's how we're going to address it. Hey, but I think I think what uh, Judah was going to say is right on. We had an amazing live stream here. This is awesome. What is this? This is not the first text talking shop live stream, but we had a really good one. We had no. six out of eight people plus Theo in the chat. So that's seven out of eight of us were engaged and active in this live stream. So that's actually pretty pretty phenomenal. I hadn't planned on jumping on, but it was just, I think it was the two of you. So I jumped on and then boom, everyone jumped on too, but I was already here. But uh, yeah, man, it's, it's, I think it was a phenomenal live stream. Everybody, I, I hope you guys liked, enjoyed it. I hope everyone yeah. did. Yeah, we had live live car repair going on, real life situations. We, we answered questions when it came to vehicles and automotive industry. I think it was great. So I think I'm going to sign off now. I think we're. I think we should close it down, guys. I really appreciate you for coming to watch. We're at the two hour mark. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I appreciate it. I think we should shut it down. I appreciate everybody coming by, man. You guys are great. Thank you for coming through. Um, that's my goodbyes, man. Make sure to subscribe to Ed the Old Tech Guy, one of the best channels on earth, <laughs> and uh, Tech Talk You Shop and all my compadres are here. Make sure to check them out too. All right. Yep. Thank you guys all for the support. Please watch the channel. Please watch everybody's individual channels. Uh, and I agree with this one One last comment. Uh, it says, I don't care how the tool broke as long as I am told it's broken ASAP so I can fix it or replace it that way in case I need it. Yeah, that's a good point. And I'm sure those uh, Anthony's had problems with people hiding stuff from him. So he doesn't find out till he needs it. So that that can be, absolutely be an issue. <laughs> Just a little bit. Power, power stroke shoot out. GM85, man, thanks for tuning in. Everybody, please check out Text Talking Shop. I'm going to be doing a two part DIY video just so you guys know. Taking some time because I can't work on my stuff every minute of the day when I'm fixing everyone else. <laughs> Jason's going to go enjoy himself a Bud Light now. <laughs> he says, No, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> right. uh, Remember, Pluta, Pluta. Yes. Pluta oh, is Cajun. That's my boy, <laughs> Boo, right, right there. Pluta. Pluta. We're good, guys. Hit the end button, bro. Hit the end.